So let's apply all the learnings that we have done and our understanding so far on the type 3 partial fractions with quadratic factors and solve some of the important exam problems. That way we can get a real feel of how to apply what you have learned and will enjoy what we are solving. Okay, so we have a problem here. Uh, resolve this into a partial fraction and this is a partial fraction and I have rewritten this over here. And let's say you get this problem in the exam and how do you kind of attack it? The first and the foremost thing is to make sure that you identify the right type of the problem. So far we have learned type 1, type 2 and type 3 and type 4 we have not learned but assume that there are four types. So first thing uh, you do is you figure out which type this problem belongs to. And since we know that we are solving type 3, we know this belongs to type 3. But in exam you just need to make sure that this indeed belongs to type 3 and we have some housekeeping activities first things first that we need to do here to make sure that we have got the type identified correctly. What are those things? First and foremost, like I said, for any partial fraction, uh, check whether it's a proper fraction or an improper fraction. And since we are solving only proper fractions, we know it's a proper fraction. But that's always the first thing that you need to do uh, to see whether it's a proper fraction or improper, meaning check out the degree of numerator and, and denominator. And if it's less, it's a proper fraction. We know this. Second thing is, Check out the denominator what's going on here. In the denominator we have one linear term over here and we have one quadratic term here. Okay, So in the denominator we have one term which is quadratic where the direct power of x is 2 and 2 whenever you have the power of 2 it means quadratic. Okay, That's what we have done here. Okay, And we also know that this particular quadratic equation or this particular quadratic expression cannot be factorized. It cannot be factorized. Whatever you do, there is no identity using which you can factorize. So this is this is the best that we can have. So whenever we have this condition, so all these three conditions satisfy that this is indeed a type 3 problem. And once you are done that, let's jump into the solution of that. Okay. Now let's let's see what is the solution. So we have this given problem here. Okay, and like I said, in any partial fraction, this first step that you put here, this is the only and the most important opening step to solve the partial fractions. Once you get this right, based on the type of the problem, this particular thing, how many constants I need to put. Once you get this right, based on the type of the problem, rest is a simple mathematical calculation. You don't have to really remember in that. In that sense, partial fraction is an easy, easy syllabus because you just need to remember this just one step for each type. There are four types. And type 4 is very easy, improper, you can easily identify. So if you can just understand for these three types, how are you going to identify the types and put the substitution of the constant as the opening step, you are almost 90% done to secure your marks. Okay, so in this episode, I'm going to just focus time, most of the minutes on this first step because that's the most important step. Okay, so we know there's a type 3 quadratic and if you see what's happening here, I've explained that in a zillion times in the previous episode, but I'm going to again... Uh, give it a shot to explain a different way but I'll recommend that you check out my previous episode on type 3 partial fractions and then come back to this okay so if you see here we have got two terms because now we cannot factorize this uh, or we, we not terms sorry we can call them as factors there we've got two factors this is factor 1 and this is factor 2 factor 1 is linear and we know now we are kind of uh, very strong on how to solve linear factors we just take one constant and uh, separate that out and the second factor is quadratic which cannot be factorized so we take that as it is in the denominator and the, in the numerator instead of just getting one constant by itself we substitute this expression or this is also a polynomial now let's try to understand what's happening here okay and this is the most important step like i said check out my previous episode where i've talked in detail about this in this episode i'm just going to paraphrase or do it in a different way so that your understanding is very clear. So what are we trying to do here? So you can take, you can assume this each term over here. Okay, you can assume this each term. There are two terms here. This term one, term one, and this term two. And you can assume each term as a ratio of two polynomials. This is a rational expression by itself. Okay, and this is also a rational expression by itself where we have a polynomial and uh, polynomial in the numerator and polynomial in the denominator and the way it works is over here in the denominator and we know that both of them has to be proper fractions which meaning the degree of the numerator has to be less than the denominator okay we know that also so the way its structure is over here the degree 
of the term 1 denominator is a linear factor hence the degree is 1 and hence to make this whole expression as a proper fraction this has to be a constant by itself which is implied that it has a x variable to the power 0 it cannot have any greater powers of x more than 0 because that will make this as an improper fraction so that way you can see the numerator and denominator both are kind of polynomials and the numerator starts with one degree less than the denominator similarly over here the denominator is quadratic with the power degree 2 and since it's quadratic we should and we should we should know that polynomial is nothing but it has got a varying degrees of uh, the variable x let's say if it's only one variable all the way uh, to the constant we know that right so let's say we have then x raised to 1 and then we have finally x to the power 0 which is nothing but just a constant okay so all the polynomials are written all the way through the constant in the first thing it was a constant by itself we just st we just put this because there's nothing else to put because the degree of this was 1 so we we cannot go backwards of this we have to come from this direction so we cannot put that but in this case the denominator is starting with the power of 2 okay the denominator is starting with the power of 2 and the numerator to make it a proper fraction we have to take one degree less and then go all the way through the constant that means if you take one degree less it's going to be the, to the power of one that means we're going to start here in the numerator the numerator will start here and it will go all the way to the constant which is nothing but c because this is x to the power zero this is as good as x to the power zero and that's how we construct this particular expression uh, and that's the difference between type 1 type 2 and type 3 in type 1 we just had this format in type 2 also we just had the constant by itself and again you should think about that as a uh, the constant as an polynomial expression with an unknown variable x to the power 0 and in this case since it's a quadratic we cannot just take a constant we have to take it as a polynomial so that it, the whole thing becomes a rational expression and it's to make it a proper fraction we'll start with one degree less than this and take it all the way through the constant in this case the constant is given so we cannot we don't have to go all the way because it starts and ends at the constant in this case we will take one degree less if this is your quadratic equation in the denominator the numerator over here will start with one degree less and go all the way through the constant and that's how you kind of construct this whole uh, expression and that's how you need to know that and that's the only step that's important in this whole uh, substitution for any type for that matter and if you get that right then rest is just a cakewalk okay so now assume that now you got this step right and i'll be explaining again this step when i do my closing comments on this episode and then rest is the same step for all the three types you take the lcm and cross multiply so that you can have a common denominator and the denominator gets cancelled that's what you do here over here if you see i've taken the cross multiplication and i'm getting the common denominator and then over here i'm cancelling out the denominator because it's now same i, I can cancel out the denominator and I'm just left with the numerator on the left hand side and the right hand side both are numerators and now we have got the we can take different values of x based on our convenience to see if you uh, what kind of constants become zero so for example to find a if you see here if you can just put some value of x this whole expression can become zero and that magical value of x is x is equal to minus 2 so if you put minus 2 here it becomes minus 2 plus 2 here and it becomes zero and 0 multiplied by anything is going to be 0 so that way you'll just get the expression with only a, uh, only a constant and that's what you're exactly getting it here and the value of a is minus 1 that's how you get it when you substitute the constant you substitute x is equal to minus through all the way on the left hand side and the right hand side this whole second term on the right hand side becomes 0 and you get the value of a and similarly to find c you can just see which what what can you make 0 to find the value of c so over here to find the value of c for example now you already know the value of a okay and if you just make x is equal to 0 b will get 0 and then c can stand by all by itself and a we already know which is minus 1 so if you just substitute x is, x is equal to 0 on the left hand side on the right hand side all the way through and also substitute the value of a which we have determined in the previous step where a is equal to minus 1 then what happens is you get the value of c because b will become 0 and then you get the value of c now since you know the value of a and c you already know the value of a and c 
Now it does not matter how what value of x you take to find the value of b. You can take any value of x in this equation and then plug in the values for a and then plug in the values for c. Automatically you are going to get the value of b. So the value does not matter. But as a thumb rule, always take low values and easy values like 0 or 1. That's your preferred values. 0 we already taken here to get the value of uh, c. So we are not going to fetch b based on that. So the available value is 1. So we can take that. So we'll put x is equal to 1 over here, the over here, and then we'll substitute the values of a and c that we have found from the previous step, and thereby getting the value of b as 1. Okay, that's how we get the three constant a, b, c. And last but not the least, you take the whole rational expression that was given to you. This is what you kind of had your opening step, and our whole objective was to find the value of a, b, and c, uh, which we have found, and that's how you're going to put here. If you see, the value of a is here, the value of b is 1, this is like 1 here, that's the value of b uh, and a was minus 1 and c was I think 1. So we have found three constants a, b, c and we have got three constants here a and b and c. You need to write this this way to get the marks and that's how uh, type 3 is solved and pretty much it's that uh, simple. The only step important is this step, that's the most important step that we see here. And let's kind of have some closing comments, reiterating so that you never forget what's happening in this. Okay, so what are we going to reiterate? Assume the numerator for type three problems. Assume the numerator for the quadratic denominator. That means this is the quadratic denominator. The term is going to be bx plus c. We are going to just write a whole polynomial. Like I said, uh, the denominator starts from x to the power two all the way to constant. So we are going to take denominator one degree less and all the way through. A constant which is uh, c so it's going to be bx plus c which is c is as good as cx to the zero that's what we're going to do that's your first step then the way you think is think about each of these individual terms this this is one term this one term again i'm going to be repetitive here just to close the comments each of the term you should think as a rational expression which is the ratio of two polynomials and this, even though it's constant you should think of this as a polynomial with x to the power zero because at any cost this uh, rational expression for this both the terms cannot be it has to be always a proper fraction meaning the degree of the x in the numerator should be always less than the degree of the denominator but when we substitute we can take one degree less we can start with one degree less whatever is in the denominator you subtract one and take one degree less over here it's linear factor to the power one then you, st you just put the constant which is as good as x to the power zero in this case it's a quadratic x to the power two then you start with one and go all the way through the constant that's what you do here over here and that's very important to make sure that the, this kind of individual terms remain proper fractions and last but not the least once once you do this assumption in some cases you will get this value of b in some cases you will not get the value of b in this case you did get the value of b but when we see the next episode when i solve more problems there are going to be uh, situations where the value of b is zero and it will be just a and c but still you will start with this assumption that b this particular bx or b kind of existed and that's how you do it if it has a value it has a value if it does not have a value it's going to be zero and that's how you solve type 3 uh, quadratic factors and that's kind of a sum up on this episode i'll see you in the next one